Okay, now we are ready to implement the logic behind moving around and loading the additional chunks, so additional part of our terrain, when we move in a single direction for some time, so for some distance, moving from the first starting point to the next one. So in our project, in the game manager script, we are calling this method uh, called world load additional chunk request when our conditions are met so when we have crossed the threshold uh, after which uh, after which distance we basically want to load more chunks so what we are going to do is we are going to open our world script and if you're at the top you can simply select the drop down list here and search for load additional chunk request method and this method we are going to need to fill in in order to be able to load more chunks right now we are only debugging uh, a message and since we have already refactored our get uh, generate world method that, that now uses this get positions that player sees method that uh, to get our data all we need to do is create another public void and this time we are going to have this generate world uh, previous method takes in the vector 3 int position and instead here we are going to call uh, in this get positions that player sees this position and for our button we are going to have this generate world overload method that takes no argument and this we are going to call from our button click uh, and we are going to call here generate world and we are going to simply pass here vector3 int dot zero which we have passed previously inside this get positions that player sees so now we can assign this to our button but we can now use this which we can call uh, as a private method because we are going to only use it from inside of our world uh, class we can call the same method inside our uh, load additional chunk request so after we debug.log the statement we can uh, pass here to this generate world a vector 3 int dot round to int and we can round to int our player dot transform dot position so we need to pass here vector 3 int that's why we need to round it to the integer the player position i don't know quite why we have this empty method here but anyways what it will do it will call the same method that we have used first to generate our world and since our get positions that player sees uses this uh, select positions to create to only select the new chunks that we need to generate uh, we are going to have here in this for each loop to generate only the additional chunks not all of those five by five field of chunks Instead, we are going to only generate five uh, chunks, or I think at the corners, when we are moving in the diagonal direction, we could generate five and four, so this would be, I think, nine chunks. But basically, this uh, will still freeze our unity for a bit until those chunks get generated and get uh, gets instantiated. So this is where we are going to introduce multi-threading in the next section, but basically this is the idea. Now, of course, we would also want to delete the old chunks, but for now, let's test if our logic will work. Make sure that you save the script. Let's go back to Unity, because uh, as you might recall, we have created this generate world method, and we need to assign it to our button. So let's go back to Unity. Okay. Now, inside our canvas, we need to go to our button, and at the top, uh, at the bottom, we should have this onClick event, which currently was oh i have closed this uh, which uh, was uh, calling this generate world method and it should still call it because we have recreated it uh, and uh, it is simply calling the next method and we can in addition to that simply select our button as a second callback and we can assign the function button and set it enabled or i think it should have something like interactive to be false so that we cannot really click it again because as you might recall we have deleted the logic of deleting the old stuff before we generate the new stuff uh, so we do not want to click it anymore okay so now if everything went all right let's select the y-axis on in the scene view so we can see the from the top what's going on let's click play and we are going to select the regenerate button okay so now we are seeing our world from the top view 
and we have our player spawn in our game. So let's start moving in one direction and let's take a look what's going on. As you can see, the new part of our world was generated and as you can see from the top view, it matches perfectly our current terrain. Now one issue is that our previous chunks are not uh, re uh, deleted or removed because we basically do not want to have them if we are moving in this direction, we do not care about them. But let's keep on moving, let's see if our uh, terrain will be generated. Okay, I have, I think, changed the direction of the movement. And as you can see, we can even see it in our game world that we are generating our new chunks. Now, if we get closer to our player, as you can see, we only have uh, in our world uh, two chunks generated. So we have one, two, uh, the middle one, and one, two on the other side. So those should be the five chunks. If we increase the... Uh, size or the drawing distance of course it will take longer to generate those chunks so first of all i would like to stop uh, keeping those old chunks since we do not simply need them and we can also lower the water level since this is pretty high let's stop the game and just for the uh, sake of it let's select the world and i think in the terrain generator in the biome generator we had the water layer and the water level hill here, let's set it to be something like 3. Let's see how it is generated right now. And okay, this is much better. It is much lower, so we can safely traverse it and see a bit more. Great. So now, if we stop the game, we need to deal with the issue of removing the old chunks when we move away from them. So first thing we need to do is reopen our world script. Okay. And we want to find our generate method, so generate world method that takes in the vector uh, 3 int. We can delete the old code that we had here because our new code works perfectly fine. So now we have this new data generated and as you might recall this struct contains the uh, data chunk positions to remove and chunk data to remove. But in our uh, method called get positions that player sees we have never called this. Uh, as you can see, we have this uh, set to be a new vector 3 int. I will, I think that we have this uh, positions to update that we will not need anymore, but for now let's take uh, care of creating those two uh, lists. So we will need to create two new lists, so let's copy the definition of a list, vector 3 int, and we are going to call this uh, chunk data to remove, and let's create a, a second one, and this will be chunk positions to remove okay so for the first list we are going to call our world data helper and we are going to create a new method called get unneeded chunks and we are going to paste here uh, arguments world data and all chunk positions needed so that we can calculate what remains and i have one too many semicolons and for the second method we are going to call world data helper get unneeded data and again we are going to pass world the data and all chunk data positions needed so here we have passed all chunk positions here all chunk data positions we can right click on those methods and generate those in our world data helper and now we can right click on the first one and go to its definition great so this is a internal static list vector 3 int get unneeded chunks method created inside our world data helper and now what we are going to do is uh, let me paste the code for this so what we are going to do here is we are going to have a list of vector 3 int positions to remove equals a new list of vector 3 int and we are going to look for each position so var position in world data dot chunk dictionary dot keys so this is the dictionary of our chunks and those are the positions of our chunks that currently exist but we want to sort those or select only those so where position is so we are going to use lambda expressions and where we allow us to select specific uh, positions depending on the condition here and this is again from the link library and i think we had this imported at the top using system.link okay so with this we can call well where position and pass the predicate so the condition basically all chunk positions needed so this is our list of the chunks needed contain position equals false so if our positions from the chunk dictionary 
are not inside our list of positions that are currently needed, this means that those are the positions that we want to discard. So if world data chunk position contains this position, I think this is a redundant check, but we I have added it for some reason. We are going to add this to our new list, positions to remove, add positions, and we are going to return uh, this positions to remove list. So let's now find our second method, which was get unneeded data. Okay, and this is uh, this will be a bit different condition since previously we added this check, which actually we could have put inside our where clause uh, as a second condition with the end. Now, in this case, uh, in the get unneeded uh, data, we are going to return world data dot chunk data dictionary dot keys. So now we are looping through the chunk data dictionary again using the where uh, method from the link library. We are going to select positions, and the predicate will be all data, uh, all chunk data positions needed. Uh, what we have passed here as the second argument. If this contains uh, data is false, so if we do not need this data, and the second condition is very important for when we have modified our chunks. So in case we have dug a hole or placed a block on the chunk data, uh, we have modified this, and uh, we cannot simply recreate it using our Perlin noise or whatever noise uh, system do we need, use to generate it. Uh, basically, we need to save this data and keep it stored in our dictionary. Now, we could have a separate dictionary for it, but the basic idea is that if we want to save our data and load it, we need to save and load those chunks that were modified, and the rest we can recreate using our, our procedural generation algorithm. So the end condition world dot chunk data dictionary position dot modified by the player is equals false. If this is not modified by the player, then we can remove this data from our dictionary. So basically we are getting this where uh, positions, so those are the positions that are unneeded, and we need to convert them to a list, and we are returning the whole thing to our uh, method, uh, to our struct. So this is how we are going to get the positions, uh, the data positions that are not needed anymore. Okay, with those two methods done, we can go back to our world script and we have those to fill in the lists. So all we need to do is pass them to our struct. So chunk position to remove. Let's pass it to our chunk positions to remove inside our world generation data and the chunks, uh, chunk data to remove. Let's pass it to our chunk uh, positions, not to chunk positions to update. I have made a mistake here. Uh, we need to pass our chunk positions to remove to our chunk positions to remove and chunk data to remove as the chunk data to remove and the chunk positions to update as new vector3 uh, int list. Okay. And now this should be good. So now we have received the data about what we, we should destroy in our world. So now we can go back uh, up inside our world script where we have generated our world. Okay. So First, we want to remove the old chunks that are not necessary. Uh, basically, we do not care in which, or which order we are going to do this, but uh, we need to do this anyways. So we are going to look for each var position inside our world generation data dot chunk positions to remove. So this will be vector three int. Okay, you can create those by simply typing for and uh, for each and tap tab to create this quickly. And we are going to look for each position inside our world generation data dot chunk positions to remove. And we are going to call our world data helper dot remove chunks. And we're going to pass this world and the position. And the second loop will be var for each position, which will be vector three int position in the world generation data dot chunk data to remove. And we are going to call world data helper dot remove chunk data this time. So this is the data. And again, we are going to pass the this, so the world and the position. And with those two methods, we're going to simply uh, do the logic behind removing those, uh, either the uh, chunk game objects or the data from our dictionary. So again, let's right click quick actions and generate both of those methods inside our world data helper. And again, we are going to click on the first one, remove chunk, right click and go to the definition. Okay, so first of all, what we are going to do is we are going to get the chunk render chunk equals new 
uh, null object. And we are going to check if our world.worlddata.chunk dictionary uh, has this value. So we are going to call again try get value position out to this chunk value. And we are going to pass here uh, in case this is true world.remove chunk chunk. Later on, we are going to have a world render separate a script that will deal with spawning and uh, removing chunks that will also contain some object pooling to reuse those chunks but for now we are going to simply right click and quick action and generate this method inside our world and next we are going to have world world data chunk dictionary and we are going to remove this position from our dictionary and of course for our remove chunk data this will be a bit easier let me paste the code because all we need to do is call world world data chunk data dictionary and we are going to remove this position from our dictionary now we need to call this additional method because our world data helper is a static class that is not a mono behavior so we cannot really call from this destroy method to destroy our game object we need to call this from a mono behavior and our world is a mono behavior so let's right click on the remove chunk and go to the definition of this method and basically what we could do is simply call our chunk dot game object dot set active false since this will be cheaper than destroying this and later on of course we are going to implement the object pooling and enqueue it to a queue and we are going to reuse the old chunks when we are spawning our new chunks okay let's save this actually select file and save all to save all the scripts and we should be good to go we are now removing the old chunks old data and creating the new one okay so let's go back to unity great if we press play now we should be able to see that if we regenerate our world our world is gener generated let's start moving in one direction let's see if our world is working let's actually let's select our animated player so, so that we can see it in the scene view and let's keep on moving and as you can see, our old data and old chunks are now gone. As you can see, those are disabled and only the new ones are visible. So basically, we save a lot of performance uh, when we are uh, disabling those old chunks. And later on, we can, of course, create a gizmo that will show us where are the world data positions. Uh, that we have currently available like I did in the end project but for now this is it now we can create our infinite world and as you can see there is some overhead of this as you can you can select the stats and you will see that our fps drops a bit when we are loading we are performing all those operations and this isn't terrible on a powerful machine but basically you can end up like this hitting a wall because it was never there before now one way to mitigate this would be to of course add to our world more chunks so let's select four chunks for example okay so let's press play and let's see how it works we can regenerate our world but again the more chunks we have the more we will need to generate so the bigger hit the fps will get when we are moving and as you can see we are now not hitting any walls when we are moving but basically what you can see is that our camera rotates after the update because we have missed a couple of frames when we were moving our mouse so this is this teleportation effect where we are moving and if you are moving your camera it might end up somewhere in a strange place and as you can see we can still move on but this is a bit of an issue that we need to mitigate through a multi-threading algorithm in the next video we are going to implement the digging mechanic before we work on our additional biomes and later on about multi-threading on the multi-threading okay and this uh, camera going through those walls is just a, uh, a problem of the near clipping plane and far clipping plane you can play around with those values to stop the camera from going through the walls okay see you in the next video